The Sesh Podcast, episode 148, take one. Hello, free shavakadoos, and welcome to The Sesh. I hope you guys are all having a great day. Happy fall. Ew. Here we are. Fall is not bad, Janelle. You're right. It's not the worst. Winter is the worst. You're right. Agreed, you're right. You're right. Fall you're is right. nice. Okay. Enjoy the fall. Sometimes, yeah, it is. Can be a nice brisk day, a crunchy mm-hmm. leaf, a yes. pumpkin spice. Just kidding. Yeah, it's nice. I we both hate pumpkin spice, it's but I like the favorite. other pumpkin. The things. apple one I like. Mm-hmm. The pumpkin cold, the whatever cold foam. foam. Yeah, that mm-hmm. is some good shit. I, I will gave say. Holly some of that this weekend, and she was into it. I have a video clip I'll share. It's pretty good stuff. Okay, I'll give it mm-hmm. to Starbies. It's it's very good. We love they that. They know what they're doing. Anyways, yeah. yes. I finally allowed myself to have the pumpkin stuff because I was like, mm-hmm. I am not going to have the oh. pumpkin stuff until it is officially fall. A lot of people have been celebrating fall since like I July. Know. And then they get pissed if you tell them that it's not fall yet. It's too early. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Listen, yeah, people, no, it's we can't fall. rush everything in this life. We have to enjoy what we have when it's actually happening Okay. You gotta live in the moment. You know, people start celebrating Halloween in July. It's ridiculous. It's too much. The or, only thing I will say is I'm about ready to start listening to Christmas music. Okay? See, you are a psycho just like all of them. <laughs> only when it celebrate comes to things music. when it is time to do it. Agreed. I just l- love Christmas music. I could listen to that shit I do in not. June. I mm-mm. I get so sick of it by Christmas. So right. I can't start until like December first. So delightful. Woo. You don't get annoyed by all that. Absolutely not. Over no, over. I could listen to it on repeat, dude. I cannot. It gives me like the sense of nostalgia and coziness of like elementary school. Mm. Remember? Have you ever seen those TikToks? Yes, the nostalgia ones. Josh loves. I like want to cry when I see. Them. I know, like preparing for winter break, counting it down in your planner. Mm-hmm. You have like the little, you like decorate cookies or something mm-hmm. with your class. They roll in the TV. They roll in Scott the TV. Got frosty on. <laughs> Damn. Yeah, it was good times. The TV good being times. rolled in, you knew that school was going to be lit that day if there was a TV rolled into oh, your class. Yeah. The best. Remember the computer carts? Oh, yeah. Did you guys? I'm sure that you guys had change. the overhead projector, oh, right? Like, oh, the, sure. With yeah. the visa V's. With the visa V's. Mm-hmm. And they had like little pens they had to yeah. write on. Yeah. I yep. wanted one so bad because I just wanted to, I always liked playing like school at mm-hmm. home. Oh, yeah. And I really wanted an overhead projector of my own. Mm-hmm. I was like, how do I get my hands on one? Did of these? you guys, were you guys too old for the, um, for the smart boards? Yeah. They, no, we, we had smart boards. We're not that old. Yeah, come on now. I'm Wait, so- when did he have a smart board? <laughs> in like seventh grade, I remember they got one. Like the it was like the big class. white, like the mm-hmm. big yep. white board that was yep. like. Because I think that's when we got it. It's like no, it's a too. smart. It's like a projector, but smart. You but, probably had one at your school. It was like a yeah. Wait, what looked, do you mean by smart? Well, <laughs> no, no, it was a <laughs> it was, smart for the times. <laughs> it was a screen that was in place of a whiteboard, uh-huh. and you could. Um, it was kind of like a giant iPad, but not technologically yes. advanced at all but like oh. they had markers that you would pick up and like write on them like quote unquote write but it wouldn't really write it would just like show yeah, up on I the did, screen I definitely didn't have that really? we had uh, whiteboards with expo markers <laughs> Good on yeah, I had that most through. of high school it was yeah. just in my middle school science class that we had a smart board yeah Maybe they had just a like few of them when I was trying it out yeah I don't even know if they use those but damn they had they get to take home their laptops yeah she was like yeah they have a laptop that they get at the beginning of the year and they have it the entire time. They take it home, they bring it to school. In high school, that I, I did that. they did that with us too. Really? Yeah, I mean, I went to two different school districts, but the first one I went to, um, we all had MacBooks. Damn. That's, yeah. Um, yeah. That's crazy. I would have been stoked for that. I remember being able to check out from the library like a typing pad. Do you remember? No. I don't know what they're called. Oh, like, the, is it the black one where it has, like, the little red button in the yeah, middle? Yeah, it have, like, 10 files that you could have going oh. with different documents. And it was what? it just was a small, like, gray-looking screen. What is it? It's like a typewriter. What basically. was it called? I have no <laughs> recollection of that. I used to love checking those out and taking them home. What was it called? I don't remember. Hmm. I have no idea. Someone Middle probably school knows. sounds wild now. The stories that John's mom tells me is... It's scary out there. I know. She says that there's this thing now where there's a TikTok challenge where you go into your class or your um, bathroom and you do as much damage as you possibly can in like five minutes and you film it and put it oh, to TikTok. That sounds like me. <laughs> <laughs> Does, Kendall. <laughs> yes. Remember the piano story? Mm-hmm. Yes. We all remember the 
fucking wow that's crazy yeah they go and they like try to do as much damage and create as much chaos as they can in the school bathroom (laughs) for tiktok why and she says that they confiscate like 30 vapes a day jesus damn i don't know and this high or this middle school that she teaches that is like known to be a very like you know i don't know high class i guess like affluent high school very high class bougie (laughs) bougie high school you know middle bougie, school. bougie middle schoolers running around wow speaking of bougie middle school we were just i was just telling them about a tiktok i found of this girl last night talking about she was like doing her makeup with her friend and they were talking about people they hate and it was so brutal it literally made me nervous to go to school today <laughs> it was scary i um yeah i know who you're talking about i feel like most people will what i want to know is how she affords like 400 dollars of skincare well, wow. she goes shopping and on her 12 year old face. It's crazy. She has like, sh- you know, mall hauls. She comes home with so much shit. I'm like, it's, it's, um, I wonder her where her parents are. That's all I'm going to say about that. But anyway, we forgot to introduce our lovely producers. And you didn't introduce yourselves either. Oh, yeah. Right. I am Kendall. <laughs> <laughs> I'm Janelle. And we're joined by Crelly and Sydney. Ladies, 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 ladies. <laughs> Welcome back, ladies. So happy to be here today. We have several interesting stories to go over mm-hmm. today. Some CSI, some spicy. I have great news. What? You're going to cry tears of joy. Tears of joy? Okay, I'm ready. Hit me. I could use some tears of joy today. There is a reboot of The Office. Oh, in yes. The works. I oh, saw you that. Know that. Yep. Yep. They well, might are be able to uh, break the news to you. Tom put it in the office yeah. chat. Yeah. In our office chat. Mm -hmm. I'm excited. Mm -hmm. But also kind of like, what will that entail? I don't know. I don't know if it needs to be redone. Really? It's good the way it is. Okay. Do you know who's playing in it? No. I think it's the same dudes. Really? I wonder if they're going to do like play off of, they're not going to start from the beginning type of thing. I would assume they would go from where they left off. Okay. That's awesome. How did it end? Just tell me like roughly how it ended. Mm, well steve carell left like in the middle of the seasons and he moved to colorado and because he wanted to he was in movies and stuff he wanted to move on gotcha um but yeah um i don't want to like spoil it for people i want to tell you how i feel like it's one of those where it's old enough you can spoil it it's it's not that exciting okay well yeah never mind then (laughs) anyways Thought it would be thought you'd get a little more of a reaction out of Kendall. I don't have tears of joy. <laughs> Got anything else? Uh, Can you give me tears what else? of joy. What else? What else? No, nothing else. Mm. Oh, the big brother. Okay, you, actually, I was surprised. A lot of you guys liked when we did our big oh, brother a little segment. Big brother roundup. A lot of you guys liked. I am it. up to date now. So we can I do didn't that. watch last night's because it came on at nine o'clock oh, and right. I was in bed. Shit, <laughs> maybe we shouldn't. Neither of us saw it. I forgot when it came out last <laughs> All night. All I'll say is that I was so happy when Cameron and Jared left, and then those two got back in the fucking house. Yeah, insane. Some zombie shit. Or... That pissed me off, yeah, man. Of course, and I, I really think. CBS is very, they pick when to introduce these new challenges. I think they come up with this shit on the spot. Yeah, They're I like, agree. Oh, these two can't leave because it would be less interesting. So we got to no, both of them spice it up left. and keep them there. Everyone's you know, pissed. They're so annoying. God, Jared is the worst, man. But it makes for good TV at the same time, right? Like, No, Jared just makes me actually mad. I think it's just interesting. He should be kicked off. Mm. He said the R word. He yeah. literally called America the oh, R word. Oh, he did? Yeah, like months ago. Well, like a month ago, dude, maybe he more. he sucks. And, and everyone was like, you should kick him off because what's his yeah. nuts? That other yeah. dude, Luke, said the N word. Right. And then got immediately removed. They should removed. have kicked him off. And CBS has a zero tolerance policy. Yeah, so what the hell? Mm-hmm. It's okay. because it's the mommy and son. Oh, right. The duo. See, they, they have different rules for different people. They pull bullshit, whatever is going to get them the ratings. They're probably like, we can we can afford to send this guy home for saying the N-word because it'll be interesting to mm. people. It'll cause some drama and it'll make us look good. We have no tolerance for that. But the R-word, that's fine. Oh, yeah. If it's coming from one of our top guys who's bringing in all the ratings. Mm-hmm. Drives me crazy. Oh, and then there's um clips of Corey and America having relations in the shower. Oh, they finally did it. In the shower. Mm, that, well, that's where they always do it, right? Where else, I don't know. Where else would you do on it? Big Brother, that's how they've always done it. I don't know anyone who's been 
I don't recall anyone doing it in the shower. Oh, that's like the place that they all they always be fucking really? in the shower. Oh yeah. I can't imagine doing that on Well, because they still you TV. can still see their heads. Unless I I don't know, he's pretty short. Maybe they can duck down. <laughs> no, you, you can see them. They're like making out in the shower. I don't know if they did the full deed, but they were in there together. Hey, if you're in that house that long, can't blame them. I like those two. Yeah, I like them too. She's smart. Mm-hmm. He's interesting. Mm-hmm. I mm-hmm. like them. Mm-hmm. You know what show you have to watch that I've been trying to tell you? You have to watch the latest season of The Ultimatum I on know. Netflix. See, you were like 30 minutes too late on that because I <sighs> just had started The Real Housewives of New York, the oh, re- okay. like the new cast mm-hmm. of it. And you know me, I can't do more than one thing okay. at once. Well, so this it's so good. It's wild. I don't these people, oh, it's crazy. Really? Yeah. Well, it basically ends up being so in you know, they come in with an ultimatum. It's like couples that want one of them wants to get married, one of them doesn't, so they give an ultimatum and then they switch couples within the group and they live with someone else under a fake marriage for three weeks. It's so whack. The emotions that these people go through because they're they then get a they all hang out and they are with the people that are currently dating their partners. And so they, can, oh, they live side. in a house together. No, they're in different apartments, but they like bring them together for girls night and boys night and like group nights. And it gets Dang. so this season is crazy. Did you watch last season? Yeah, uh, I've seen them. Queer all. Love, I think it was called. You watch it, Curly? Yeah, um, the Queer Love one was great. I watched that one. I watched the Queer Love one. That one was really good. Yeah, um, it was really interesting. But I haven't. That was kind of boring, but yeah, I. I no, I I think I I think I finished it. You gotta I watch start this ultimatum. This one. It's yeah. crazy because it basically ends up where the the couples that are left all just switch. So yeah, what? yeah, two couples switch partners. The other two couples switch partners, and then they can like decide to get married after that. Yeah, that's it's pretty wild. <laughs> it's interesting. You should watch it. That anyway, does sound something like I would enjoy. The you more would chaotic really enjoy and it. stupid, the better. It's very chaotic and stupid. Like I can't believe these people. I think if you're willing to go on a TV show. And date someone else. The, some of them are in a relationship for like seven years. Oh. And then, John and I should go on. <clears throat> what? Why? You guys are engaged. Oh, I thought it was people who were like dating forever but not married. No, it's yeah, like well, one you of guys them. are getting married. You're engaged. They're oh. like wanting the, their partner to pop the question. Oh, Commit. sorry. Okay, got it. Yes. Never mind then. But I don't, okay. I'm like, what brings you? Your relationship can't be at a good place if you're willing to get on a TV show. Yeah. For millions of people and it just exploit how <laughs> well, I wonder traumatic this whole experience is. Some of them is. are like just wanting to find that TV fame. So they oh, agree. For like, Let's sure. go on. For sure. But then I think once they actually are in it and they see their partner dating someone else like, and they have to come back together and be like, here's yeah. the things that I'm really loving about this person and oh. I'm getting this from them and th- my partner never did this for me and like their faces while they're all Ooh, talking. I'd be and- pissed. It's pretty crazy. Yeah, Dang. it's juicy. It's, it's juicy, juicy reality TV. It's a good zone out Dang. show. Dang, God, I love reality TV so I much. Are you uh, keeping up with Salt Lake City? Yes. Uh, no. I yeah. Catch up mm-hmm. on I watched I like that it. last night. Very good. It's one. getting good again. Yeah, it's it a little dry now. People are starting to get pissed and yell at each other. Okay. I thought Heather pissed Watch. herself. No, dude, that clip of her throwing up though in the fucking in the, party bus. Yeah, that was disgusting. Ew. Disgusting. Don't and I were like, oh, know, maybe I'm surprised they even like showed that. I thought she like full on pissed herself. Oh, wow <laughs> meredith kills me oh my god i'm <laughs> disengaging from this conversation <laughs> she's like get out Please. and then lisa with her six like, it was sentimental i'm really sad it was sentimental so i've mentioned many times on this show what a game changer ketamine therapy was for my mental health there was a point where i was really struggling with anxiety and depression to the point where it was just so debilitating and i didn't know where to turn and josh found ketamine therapy and I decided to give it a go, and wow, did it change everything for me. I have recommended it to several friends and family, and they've also seen great results. I did my ketamine therapy at a clinic, but now there is a new way to do ketamine therapy at home, which is really convenient and more comfortable. It's great to have that option. And MindBloom is the leader in at-home ketamine therapy, having safely helped thousands of people overcome their anxiety and depression. Unlike traditional talk therapy, ketamine works quickly and doesn't have the unpleasant side effects of traditional antidepressants. In a study of over 1,200 MindBloom clients, 89% reported improvements in their anxiety and depression after only two sessions. And right now, MindBloom is offering our listeners $100 off your first six-session program when you sign up at mindbloom.com sesh and use promo code sesh. So take the first step and break free from your anxiety and depression with MindBloom. That's mindbloom.com sesh. Use promo code sesh. I have 
something though that ju- I just randomly found. Actually, no, Anna Lee found this. Shout out to Kendall's sister. Um, she just sent us this clip, and it's so funny. I feel like it's a quick CSI. It'll only take a second, but the footage is golden. Okay, mm. okay. So this is coming out of um, KTLA. A shirtless man wanted for robbery in Grand Theft Auto led officers on a slow speed pursuit with a dog in his lap from behind the wheel of a golf cart. <laughs> a slow speed pursuit. <laughs> yeah. Oh my god, my ears. Oh. This is so iconic. This dude is shirtless <laughs> in a golf cart with a dog in his lap. He doesn't give a rolling damn. down the high or rolling down the street. I feel like this is something I would do in my later years. Like me and Charlie in a golf cart. <laughs> this looks like an episode of like, he's like, catch me, bitch. <laughs> I don't know what y'all are doing. You'd think it'd be easier to apprehend him. I wow, know, right? all those guys for him. <laughs> it's so God good. Damn. It's this so looks like good. an episode of like Reno 911. <laughs> 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 Apparently he eventually, um, oh, and he was shoeless. Yeah. Shout out. He ditched the golf cart and attempted to flee police on foot while carrying the dog. Then he was tackled in the parking lot. Wow, truly no fucks given. Look at him. He's like, "Mm, what? The dog. Apparently he was screaming at the cameras. Don't drink, don't do drugs, be a better person. (laughs) So Hmm. at least he's got a good message. I don't know why he was arrested. I literally just found this, but this article says it's unclear if the man stole the golf cart. So maybe that's, that's what they the thought grand it was. It's also unknown oh. if alcohol and drugs were a factor in the incident. Yeah, uh, it seems probably Officers that way. Officers placed the dog into a back of, into the back of a police car, where it was taken to a nearby city operated animal shelter. The dog is innocent, and not facing any charges. That's God. right. The dog's innocent. That's fucking right, baby. <laughs> the dog's guilty of three charges. Now, <laughs> isn't that so funny though? That what a vibe! Amazing. What a vibe! Mm. I'm into it. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Okay. Um, you know what else is a vibe? What is? Eating money. Yeah. What? <laughs> <laughs> this is pretty wild. So this happened September 8th. A security officer at the Manila airport was caught shoving $300 bills into her mouth. There's actually a video of it. Let's take a look. Mm. Yummy. Yeah. She was like mm. forcing it down. And then what's going to happen? She's going to shit it out and use it or like? <laughs> I know. That's the big question here. What is the point of shoving money in your mouth? If you're going to steal chocolate. it. Well, mm, I don't know about that. Does that, that look like chocolate to you? She's like, no, shoving. she's like <laughs> pushing it down. So, yeah, my that's my question too, Corelli, is why eat what, the yeah. money that you're going to steal? You obviously can't use it. Is it some type of ritual? Does she think it's going to give her good luck? It's going to make her like rich in spirit. But you stole the money. So like that's already like bad karma. <laughs> I have a exactly. theory that she wasn't trying to swallow it. She was trying to like make it soggy and stick it in her gums. Oh, you're probably right. Like I don't think she was actually. I think that's why she had her finger like in her mouth. because She was like shoving it into her gums. Oh, you're so right. That's definitely what was going on. <laughs> She's that's gonna... so disgusting. It, I hate touching cash. <laughs> think about how dirty that is to put that in your mouth, dude. I know it's gross. Oh, it was, oh, it was three one hundred dollar bills. Yeah. So China Morning Post reports that the thievery happened while passenger named Zay. Is it Mister Zay? Yes. Mm-hmm. Mr. Zay was undergoing x-rays scanning and the woman supposedly took the money from the passenger's handbag. (laughs) The Office of Transportation Security posted about the incident on September 18th, saying they are investigating the incident. The officer has not publicly been identified. All names seem to be redacted from documents, but supposedly she denied stealing any cash from passengers and said that she was just eating some chocolate. Bro. Hmm. She's literally standing there like, (laughs) <laughs> yeah well it's interesting the findings the investigators findings say that she deliberately swallowed mm-hmm. the paper bill so maybe your theory is not right maybe she actually mm-hmm. you think it's some type of ritual That's or was she gonna like, shit it out it's not gonna make it through you're not gonna be able to shit out money and then use it i don't think you digest money if <laughs> you swallow it's paper is it it was u.s dollars right yeah did you know that money isn't well u.s Money is uh, fabric, technically. It's twenty five. Oh, I did not know that. Twenty five percent linen and seventy five percent cotton. Yeah. Oh wow! So maybe you can shit it out. Okay. Uh-huh. What are your findings here, Investigator Janelle? <clears throat> uh, let's see. This is from Cora. 
dot com <laughs> says um, most likely since the human body cannot digest cotton or cellulose, there's a chance it could become obstructed, but it will likely come out the same way it went in. Now, this is just from some rando online, Ew. so I don't know if he knows what he's talking about, but. Well, someone else says, no, it wouldn't come out whole because the acidic contents would melt it. But this is I don't know. if Yeah, I on, don't know. On Reddit, um, someone says, no, your digestive juices are some of the most potent acids on Earth. Our stomach just regrows faster than it can be eaten. So if you eat a one dollar bill, it would be a pile of shit by the time it comes out. Damn. Your arse. Your arse. Can, I mean, she can't have actually been thinking she was going to fish it out of her shit. I wish and... we could like have her call in. I know. What was the plan? I really want to know what, what her it? deal was. Hmm. <sighs> is there some ritual to eating money? The Office for eating Transportation money. Security is pursuing an administrative case against the officer and considering filing a criminal case against her. Yeah, but I wonder because if you eat corn, it comes out in chunks. <laughs> Thanks for that, Janelle. <laughs> Isn't that like a known fact? Corn? Yeah, it's not money though. <laughs> yeah, but I'm saying like money. Money's not made out of corn, you know. But don't you think that money is less or is more uh, strong? I guess it's stronger than corn. No. Corn is a food. Yeah, but I mean, if you have cotton, if you put like if you put like a piece of cotton or a dollar bill in like stomach acid, I'm sure it'll like disintegrate. Side note: Remember the kids that would eat paper in school? <laughs> Oh, yeah. yeah. Do you think that they're shitting out full pieces of paper? I don't know. Let's, let's test it out. I don't let's know. Let's test out the theory. I'll eat a piece right now by the end of the episode. Okay, I just found there is a popular belief that if you eat money out of ritual knowingly or unknowingly, they have taken something from the person. Is that true? I don't know what this is saying. Uh, yeah, you take it. You took you his money. money. Yeah. I, okay, I, I don't, don't think it's ritualistic because you're already like doing it like with stolen money the truths behind right. ritual myths and eating from money used for ritual i don't know i think she how do they really know she was gonna swallow it oh i guess maybe they when they caught her it was no longer in her she mouth. just boofed it what's that oh put up your butt mm -hmm. yeah, yeah that would have been smarter honestly maybe her plan was to keep it soggy in her mouth but when they caught her she's, she's like, like i gotta I swallow, swallow it yeah. yeah why not wait why not just put it in your pocket <laughs> <laughs> it's not as fun that way, Carly. <laughs> I know. God, it'd be great to interview her. How interesting. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. God, it's so disgusting, though. God. Yeah, she was lucky, though, because after this happened, they removed the pockets from the yeah. uniforms. Oh. They don't get them anymore. All because of her? Mm hmm. Are they going to remove mouths, too? <laughs> <laughs> you have to have your Close mouth, your mouth shut now. <laughs> Imagine having money and going through the airport and then someone steals it in security and eats it <laughs> such an interesting turn of events <laughs> like, oh my god i wonder if so he got like a reimbursement it. or something if he got his like money back or yeah something. poor guy mm -hmm. i'd be yeah. pissed that is Side wild. Note, charles is going on an airplane soon so this oh yeah time. Oh. very exciting for him mm -hmm. going to visit my family in north carolina in for like thanksgiving <laughs> you're really mentally preparing for that i am i think about it every single day Got to mentally prepare my dog. I bought his little case. Got to slowly <laughs> nice. work him up to it. Mm -hmm. Got so to any tips out, out the there on flying with a scared little dog, hit me up. I'm going to drug him, though. Yeah. yeah, that's the tip. That's the tip. Yeah. That's all you need. He's getting trazodone. Yep. I'm going to boof it for him. Just kidding. Oh, <laughs> you're going to boof it for him? <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. Just a little piece of cheese for Incredible. Charles. Incredible. Ever wish you could spend less time planning, shopping, and cooking for the family and more time actually with them? From easy, time-saving breakfasts and family dinners to kid-approved lunches and snacks, HelloFresh has what it takes to keep everyone, including yourself, happy and satisfied. Because HelloFresh takes the stress out of mealtime by delivering fresh ingredients and easy recipes right to your door. You could skip the trip to the grocery store and have dinner ready in no time with America's number one meal kit. And HelloFresh is more than just dinners. You can also stock your fridge with easy breakfast, quick lunches, and fresh snacks. I love HelloFresh so much because all of the produce that I get is extremely, you guessed it, fresh. And that's because it travels from the farm to your door in less than seven days. I have never received a rotten piece of food in my HelloFresh boxes. Everything is always super, super fresh and delicious. I love HelloFresh because it allows me to kind of get out of the box when it comes to 
my everyday dinners. I tend to make the same thing over and over again, but with HelloFresh, I get to try different ingredients, different pairings, and different cooking methods. Nothing I hate more than getting home and being like, hey, John, what's for dinner? And then he's like, I don't know, what should we make? And then I'm like, I don't know, what should we make? It drives me crazy, but with HelloFresh, I don't have to worry about that because I just go into my refrigerator, pull out a bag and get to cooking. And then within like 30 minutes, I have a delicious, fresh meal on the table. If you've been contemplating trying HelloFresh, this is your sign to give it a try. I'm telling you guys, I love this service so much. It's so delicious and you will not regret it. So go to hellofresh.com slash 50 sesh and use code 50 sesh for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. That's hellofresh.com slash 50 sesh and use code 50 sesh for 50% off plus 15% off the next two months. Mmm, Lizzo. Back Dude, in the, the hot timing seat. of this is so whack. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Why is it whack? Because she literally got sued again the same day that she accepted a humanitarian award. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> that you can't make this up. No, I'm telling it's you. Crazy. This is wild. So on Thursday, September 21st, Lizzo was sued again by another former employee, this time 35-year-old Asha Daniels, a wardrobe designer who worked with Lizzo's tour earlier this year. Also, along with Lizzo, the suit names Amanda Numera, Mm -hmm. Lizzo's wardrobe manager, Lizzo's production company, Big Girl Big Touring, and tour manager Carlina Gugliotta. Damn, that's a sick name. Gugliotta. Googly eyes. Googly eyes. (laughs) But yeah, so all of them getting sued. Um, She alleges that she was subject to bullying and sexual and racial harassment. Direct quote, she says, unsafe, sexually charged workplace culture. The lawsuit comes a little over a month after three of Lizzo's previous dancers, Ariana Davis, Crystal Williams, and Noelle Rodriguez, filed a lawsuit accusing Lizzo of sexual harassment and weight shaming. So the new lawsuit accuses Amanda, the wardrobe manager, of referring to the performers as, quote, fat, useless, and dumb. My God. And supposedly forcing them to change in front of predominantly white male stage crew members who, direct quote, lewdly gawk at them. Okay, what the fuck? Terrible. If that's true. It's terrible. It's disgusting. According to the lawsuit, it was also reported that there was a group chat with over 30 people from Big Girl, Big Touring Team, which included Lizzo's tour management and Asia. And supposedly a backstage manager sent a photo graphically depicting male genitalia. That's fun. Why? (sighs) Who fucking knows, man? Uh, The lawsuit says when Lizzo's tour arrived in Amsterdam, Asia claims that she saw Amanda and other supervisors discussing hiring sex workers for lewd acts attending sex shows, and buying hard drugs. The suit added on several occasions, Amanda made statements and took physical actions to threaten the entire crew. One, she threatened plaintiff and others that she would kill a bitch and stab a bitch (laughs) when she could not find her medication. Number two, she shoved a crew member in retaliation for revealing she was threatening to quit. Number three, Amanda snatched food out of a local worker's hand for merely attempting to take an assigned break. Yikes. Aisha also claims that she was expected to take part in exhausting work schedules that involved 20-hour daily shifts. What the fuck? Okay. And frequently denied breaks by Amanda, who direct quote, monitored and policed team members while under her supervision. Yikes. Aisha claimed that Amanda sprained her ankle while she was moving a clothing rack And when Amanda saw that she changed into wearing orthopedic shoes, Amanda forced her to change back into her tennis shoes. Mm -mm -mm. Uh, Aisha said back in February, she told the tour manager, Carlina, who was also named a defendant in the suit, about the racial and sexual harassment. And she details how black dancers were being mocked, objectified, and denied accommodations. Um, She says her complaints were just overlooked and that she was fired before the end of the contract. And this is a direct quote coming from from her saying... It was totally shocking. I was listening to this black woman on this huge stage share this message of self-love and caring for others and being empathetic and being strong and standing up for others. And I was witnessing myself, the dancers and the background vocalists and my local team in every city be harassed and bullied regularly. How insane is that? It's terrible. It doesn't make you just question everything. This whole Lizzo thing's been so eye-opening. I know. Like, my God. And it's very interesting because a lot of people... I don't think buy it at all. And I'm like, mm. why is that? Is it because she's like a oh, female? Oh, don't buy the lie. Yeah. The, uh, like, allegations? Yeah. Mm. 
and don't seem just to so believe set these people. on it. And well, I mean, that's always the the sentiment, right? Don't believe victims. <laughs> <laughs> that's a lot of people's motto. That's honestly is a lot of They're people's probably motto. lying. They probably be lying. But it's, it's a lot of people now. Like, yeah, I don't know. It is. That's what I'm saying. There's so many people. How much longer can you go before you're like, yeah. no, 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 no. Everyone's mm-hmm. lying. Everyone's lying. Everyone's if lying. If it was a lie, I feel like at this point they would have like figured that out because there are so many people coming out. Like, yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Yeah. What an interesting experience, though, to be working for this woman who is spreading these messages and is such a influence on so many people out there, a positive influence mm-hmm. and uplifting others. And then behind the scenes, all of this is happening. And That'd be such a strange work. Meanwhile, she's accepting awards. Yes. Lizzo took to the stage to accept the Quincy Jones Humanitarian Award at the Black Music um, Action Coalition's gala. Here's a clip of Lizzo's speech after accepting the award, creating safe spaces. Oh, that's <laughs> fucking unreal. So Why? How did they? How did this real. happen? That's insane that that's the name of the award, creating safe spaces. <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, no, I just put that in there because she says that. So I'm just, oh. I had to say, because it's a humanitarian She's creating award. safe spaces, but she's not. Oh, okay. I yes. see. I was like, they did not give her an award call that. Come on. <laughs> did not happen. Easy to do the right thing when everybody's watching you. And it's what you do in those moments where nobody's watching what is that this defines who you are. You and I'm going to continue to be who I am, no matter who's watching. I'm gonna continue to shine a light on the people who are helping people because they deserve it. I'm gonna continue to amplify the voices of marginalized people because I have a microphone and I know how to use it. <laughs> And I'm going to continue to put on and represent and create safe spaces for black, fat women, because that's what the fuck I do. Is it though? (laughs) Is it though? Um, (sighs) Lizzo's speech highlighted her $250,000 donation to various black led groups, seemingly uh, acknowledging the suits against her. So the internet's not very thrilled. <laughs> Imagine that. <laughs> about all of this. Um, people are saying, what a slap in the face to her alleged victims. This is from Reddit. Mm-hmm. Right? This is actually so gross of her. I can't even bring myself to make a joke. The allegations came out over a month ago. I'm surprised she wasn't uninvited from this ceremony or something. That's so true. Yeah. I'm so but- surprised she was given this award still. <sighs> The award committee drank the juice. <laughs> yeah, clearly. <laughs> uh, she lit- literally could have just said fucking nothing. She obviously doesn't give a shit or doesn't give a fuck. People on Twitter are saying, I read Lizzo won some humanitarian award. Must have been for feeding people bananas. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, let's see. Lizzo just won a humanitarian award. Oh, she's fighting back. Um, Lizzo's team is smart for giving her award to deflect the lawsuits. That was the most made up speech ever. She, uh, no, she'd be handling them women. Yeah. I wonder the timing of this. Like, was that just damage control? Well, I mean, it's not like her team gave I know, her the but award. I but still wonder if like more PR kind of thing. It, yeah. I don't know. Some money was swept their or, way. Or for some reason they have some type of you know, agenda of tr- trying to keep her name clean. I don't know. Yeah, it's certainly with all of this still not being settled. It's strange that they would give her yeah, that's an award what I'm in saying. the midst of all of this. Conspiracy. Very weird. Very Dude. weird. God. I can't believe how many people have come out against her. It still blows my mind. This is mm-hmm. one of the most surprising things that's come out of this year. Yeah. Now all she needs to do is get on the ukulele or the flute in her case. Definitely the flute. Mm-hmm. Sorry. (laughs) (laughs) Terrible. Yep. It'll be interesting to see how this continues to unfold. Mm -mm. Bananas. 
Big news today from Base. I am so excited about this new collection, the Olive Collection from Base. I've been waiting for them to drop a new color in their luggage and weekender and all of their cosmetic bags for a while now. And I was so excited about it the other day. I ran up to Janelle and was like, she made this collection she really for did. me. She really did. Olive is pretty much my favorite color. I love green. I love a good, any shade of green, really. And I was able to get the 29-inch large check-in roller. Now, these collections sell out like crazy. That's why I wanted to bring it up to you because if you want it, you better get your hands on it quick because she's constantly, they are constantly out of stock. When I say she, I'm talking about Shay Shay Mitchell. Mitchell. Big fan of her. I love her. And if you've never tried base, you need to because they have changed the luggage game. They really have. They got 360 degree gliding wheels, a cushioned handle, a Mm -hmm. built-in weight indicator, which is Mm -hmm. so genius. It's very, very convenient. And they have bags for your dirty clothes that you can actually wash after you come home and unpack. Again, they really think of everything. They do, they do. And we've talked many times about how much we love the Weekender bag. I am so tempted to get another it's Weekender so bag in Olive because the color is just, ah, I'm obsessed with it. But it is the best bag. I use it all the time. It has a separate compartment for shoes or dirty whatever clothes, else, hats. Swimsuits. Mm-hmm. Yes. And I absolutely love it. We have their diaper bag. We have their bottle cooler. I have a bunch of base pieces now, and it has truly become one of my favorite brands. So just wanted to let you guys know about the Olive Collection because it will probably sell out pretty quick. And every piece is made to look better with miles. So you don't have to worry about it in cargo or overhead. And Base has over 30,000 five-star reviews. And right now, Base is offering our listeners 15% off your first purchase by visiting basetravel.com slash sesh. Go to basetravel.com slash sesh for 15% off your first purchase. That's B-E-I-S travel.com slash sesh. All right. So moving on here, we have more news about Ruby Frankie, which if you missed our coverage on it, I'm sure most of you, even if you missed our episode, have seen stuff about this. It's been pretty mainstream. Oh, yeah. News. Um, Ruby Frankie, she's a family vlogger. Um, she is a parenting expert. <laughs> as she calls herself. <laughs> she is from Eight Passengers, Correct. the channel, and her business partner is Jody Hildebrandt, and they were both charged with six felony counts of aggravated child abuse after one of Ruby's children escaped Jody's home and asked a neighbor for help. We went over this, um, you know, pretty extensively, but to recap it, on Wednesday, uh, August 30th, 12-year-old Russell Frankie climbed out of a window at Jody's home and ran to a neighbor's house and pleaded for help, saying he was hungry and thirsty and asked them to call police. The neighbor told police that the boy looked emaciated and he had duct tape on his arms and ankles. On the 911 call, he said he believed there was trouble at this neighbor's house related to child abuse. Uh, Russell's injuries were so bad that he needed to be transported to St. George Regional Hospital to be treated. And Jody and Ruby were arrested on August 30th after the 911 call was made. All this happened in one day. Uh, Ruby and her husband, Kevin had this family vlog channel called Eight Passengers, where most viewers believe she overshared the lives of her six children. I mean, she just fucking did. Oh, she yeah. She absolutely did. She exploited and, the fuck out of her kids. And shared all of um, her strict disciplinary parenting style. And there was several clips that we had played that highlight her doing that. She had done so many terrible things. She is just a vile and fucking human. What makes me concerned is like, Okay, so that's the stuff that you willingly put out on the internet. What's yeah. the shit you're doing that oh, you're not filming? For sure. A lot. Terrible. And at the peak of this channel's popularity, it had more than 2 million followers that these kids were being exposed to. She received tons of backlash and criticism for viewers because of her parenting style. And yeah, after this all came out, people were, you know satisfied to see something finally happening people who have been blowing the whistle on this bitch for a long time and after the eight passengers channel was taken down ruby joined forces with jody and they started a podcast website situation on parenting advice called connections and the channel advertised itself as a mom support group that helps rehabilitate individuals who are lost and stuck in the darkness of distortion which gives birth to fear despair and all other self-destructive behaviors they offered classes and workshops that they claimed to help, but let's be honest, they were just preying on vulnerable individuals and spreading bad parenting to the masses. Yeah, and um, Jody was a licensed uh, counselor, so that's great. Yeah, excellent. But she was she was um before all of this, they revoked that. 
Yeah, well, she willing she voluntarily gave up her license is the re- most recent thing. So they appeared in court on September 8th, and now a lot more information has come out. And again, trigger warning. This is yeah. disturbing. Yeah. Very really disturbing. Is. These poor kids. Actually, let's go ahead and watch this clip, though, from the initial hearing. Okay. Lord, how are you? Frankie and Hilda Brandt had their first court appearance Friday in Washington County. My case is assigned to Judge Barnes. I would make an oral motion today to transfer this case to Judge Walton so the co-defendants back each other. The judge granted a switch of Frankie's judge to be the same as Hildebrandt's. The two will continue to be held without bond. Mm. Hildebrandt's attorney also filed a motion to the court asking for an expedited detention hearing, citing the defendant has experienced a life-threatening medical issue Mm -hmm. resulting in her hospitalization for several days. As of now, the two yeah, are scheduled for court that? for yeah, September no, 21st. Been... Live in studio, Lucy. Like, dude, like I think she just bullshit. made that completely yeah, up. I, I think so, too. I agree. I don't, yeah, because they haven't said anything. They haven't, like, come up with anything. Like, mm-hmm. even the news outlets say that they don't know what's wrong with her. Yeah. I think she's just fucking lying, pulling That's anything. Very convenient. Mm-hmm. So, according to Jody and Ruby's attorneys, um, during their first court appearance, their attorneys waived the reading of charges and neither entered a plea deal. And the judge ordered them to remain in jail without bail and scheduled their hearings for the 21st. But this actually ended up getting postponed. Um, And their attorney said that at that time they would be going ahead and asking for bail hearings. Do we know when it's postponed till? Mm -hmm. Or is it just kind of? Yeah, they said it was going to be like until after October 5th. But Mm -hmm. there's no date given. It's just sometime after October 5th. Okay. Hmm. So this is how like a lot of more information has come out about the actual search warrants that were um, conducted on the homes. This was back in August, but now the information has like finally come out. And this is so crazy, you guys. Okay, so the first search warrant was um, Wednesday, August 30th. And this is the same day that the two of them get arrested. And um, again, kind of like we already talked about in part of the warrant, talks about how the boy appeared to be emaciated and was abnormally thin and weak. Um, had duct tape and they under the duct tape was open wounds Um, and then the information came out that it seemed that his mom and jody had used cayenne pepper and honey to treat these wounds to treat them Mm -hmm. is that is that a thing people do yes well well okay kind of so basically there cayenne pepper has some antibiotic properties that can it's the capsaicin and right. every every pepper has capsaicin it's what's in the sort in the in the seeds makes things spicy that sounds extremely painful well if it's really diluted so um according to one study topicals containing 0.0125 percent so hardly any of purified capsaicin may reduce pain and tenderness but some people who try this experiment uh, experience um unpleasant burning and stuff so like, I guess there's some support out there to say that it can help, but who's doing that? And not, and that doesn't mean you just go get p- cayenne pepper out of your drawer yeah, and, and dump it on your honey. wounds. Oh my God, these poor kids. Well, and honey does have like antibacterial purposes. And like, I put it, right. I like, I, I think I put it in here, but like, there's like, there were studies made that you, you know, using homeopathic, like these homeopathic remedies can help in some instances, like, but it has to be, it's, certain types of honey and it, it it's not just like over the counter like table honey you know what i mean and yeah. also like why are you doing that right just go to the fucking doctor you can yeah. afford to go to the doctor right. you can afford to go buy neosporin exactly Come on. god that would just sting so bad oh my god well what's crazy is cayenne pepper has a scoville rating of 30 000 to fifty thousand heat units and just for reference a jalapeno sits at 25 to eight thousand. so Oof. very little compared to cayenne pepper jesus that is so fucked up i know it's so sad and i can't imagine getting a wound putting cayenne pepper and honey on it and then wrapping it in duct tape and then just, just le- like letting it go is really gonna heal it oh yeah. my god that's just literally torturous like that's so sad okay so after the initial incident officers officers went to jody's home and officials performed a sweep to see if there was anyone inside that needed medical attention. And they found Ruby's 10-year-old daughter, and records indicate that the child was reluctant to speak to officers. Um, and Russell told officers that his 10-year-old and a 14-year-old sister were inside Jody's home before he escaped. But authorities only found 
uh, the youngest child after the sweep. So they also identified what appeared to be a safe room in the basement, which was locked. A safe room? It's really creepy. Yeah, what was the purpose of that? I don't know. They couldn't get in and they weren't able they um like they weren't able to do more with it after the warrant. Right. I don't know, but I'm wondering like what the hell is in there. Yeah. I'm sure they'll get be able to get in eventually. Yeah. And all six kids have been like accounted for. Right. Yes, so it's we know it's but not still, one of the kids. Like what's in there. No, yeah. You know what I mean? Yeah. What the fuck? How also, are they, they must have gotten in there by now. Maybe they just haven't release the information yeah i'm assuming they would have gone in there quickly i wonder if they need like a separate kind of search warrant because it's like a locked room or something maybe yeah maybe you're right Ugh, how fucking whack these people are so out of their minds it's so scary the first search warrant also detailed a list of items police confiscated from the home including scotch tape saran wrap miscellaneous paper and sticky notes a bowl containing a red liquid with a spoon and no. you guys said that you couldn't confirm what the red liquid was. Huh? No, none of the none of the reports said what it was. It just says that it was a red liquid. I'm assuming it was like maybe cayenne. I'm pepper that's and water. Uh, honey. Maybe, maybe. Pie. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm assuming what Sydney said, like cayenne pepper and water or something, mm -hmm. or like or honey blood. mixed in. Well, no, because they had a separate bowl with honey and cayenne pepper. So there was two separate bowls. <laughs> what the fuck? I want to know what was in. But I feel like if it was blood, they would have just said yeah, it was they would have said blood. Probably. Ew, ew. I hate thinking about this so much. It's so creepy. Also, there was like these uh, things called Coban pack, uh, bandages, which is kind of like AC bandages. Um, some ankle socks, three sets of a brown and white rope, two handcuffs, and three carabiners. Handcuffs? Mm -hmm. These fucking whack jobs. What no. are they doing? Two handcuffs and there was two of the kids there. So I'm assuming that's what the handcuffs are for. Oh my God. This is so much worse than I ever could imagined from a vlog family. Right? Like, my God. This is straight up like the Turpins. Mm -hmm. yeah. What the fuck? So then there was the second search done. And uh, at this point, officers took three iPhones and four MacBooks from the house um, and they looked for any items that could have recorded communications between Jody and Ruby, like cell phones, computers, tablets, surveillance footage, and other devices. And then a third search was um, uh, done the following day on the 31st for Jody's phone that was supposedly in her possession at the time. And the search warrant has not been returned yet, leaving it unclear if the iPhone was seized by police. Damn. <sighs> so, like I said, Jody ended up voluntarily surrendering her counseling license. On September 19th. Yeah. I can't believe she was a counselor. That pisses yeah, me off insane. so bad. God, God, people are so evil. <sighs> Anyways, um, in a statement, the executive director of the Utah Department of Commerce said, quote, given the heinous abuse allegations, the agency felt that the surrender of the license was the best course of action to protect the safety of Hildebrandt's patients and clients. I feel so bad for all of her patients or all of her clients. Oh my God, they should all be like evaluated. So scary. Make sure she wasn't giving them like crazy advice. She probably or, was. In oh. fact, there's people out there who have come out and been like, um, how, you know, having her as a therapist has caused them harm. <sighs> Jesus. Mm -hmm. Yeah, really scary. Oh yeah, as mentioned earlier, Jody and Ruby's second hearing was scheduled for the 21st, but they have now postponed it because um, they need additional time to review tons of these new discoveries and all this evidence and stuff. So I think it's supposed to be scheduled for the fifth. It's going to be interesting to see how all this shakes out. Yeah, Hopefully we got to keep up go on this because I, I think this is going to get worse and worse. Oh, we for need to sure. There's probably so much more we don't know at this point. Because the fifth is when? That's next Thursday. Yeah. So it says for a future date after the fifth. Oh, okay, oh right, thank you, Sid. Right. Yeah, mm -hmm. so it hasn't been scheduled yet. We just know it's going to be after the fifth. I have a feeling it'll probably be like mid-October. So I wonder if um, Ruby's husband, Kevin, I wonder if he's going to be subpoenaed or if I wonder if he's going to like go up on stage um, to speak against them or if he's going, to, if they're going to find information against him or something. Go at court. Because, yeah, because he, he's been really quiet and they haven't really talked much about him. But didn't he claim like, oh, I don't know anything about this. Yeah. But how do you not well, know? Knows what That's he what I'm saying. Knows. How yeah. the fuck do I you feel not like know, bro? I'm sure he's being thoroughly investigated. I hope so, yeah. It's so... Yeah fucking scary these poor kids just insane god imagine fearing your parent that much 
So fucked up, man. Ugh. I wonder how they're doing now. Because they're all in foster homes. And uh, what a just devastating situation. I know. Just evil fucks. Insane. Okay, so in spicy news today, we have a story. <sighs> Another person who lies about having cancer. Spicy. So we've covered several different stories like this. The TikToker, what was her name? Yep, yep. Madeline or something? Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. And that was terrible. Mm-hmm. Uh, why why are people doing this? Russo was her name? Yeah. Right? Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. mm-hmm. Madeline Russo, I Madeline, think. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, let's look. Let's take a look into that real fast, actually. I wonder if there's any updates on her. Mm. Right, right. When did we cover that, though? I, I don't know if there's anything updated it was on like her. March. Yeah, what did she end up getting charged with? There, so we were talking about that I don't for think a she's while. Been charged no yet. charges? She pled guilty to first degree theft. And then I don't think she's been sentenced yet, but I think she was uh, facing up to 10 years in prison. Right. It was a lot. And initially she pled not guilty. Right, right, right. Which I'm like, so it's just so maybe you should be charged with that and sentenced to that so that it sets an example so other people don't fucking do this. I know. It's so crazy. Yeah. I'm actually covering a case on Monday. This writer on Grey's Anatomy who faked having cancer. It'll be coming out soon, but I just recorded it and it's crazy. Crazy. She's just... (laughs) She lied about a ton of shit. She was like, an actor? It was truly, no, she was a writer for the show, but she would write her own stories into the storyline of Grey's Anatomy. So her her rare cancer was written into the show. What? She brought up her um, girlfriend's uh, story of abuse and wrote that into the show. She's in one of the episodes as a nurse. Um, but it was wild the amount of lies that this woman told. But she didn't, there's no legal repercussions against her because she never scammed anyone or did anything illegal. Um, Disney open, which Disney works with Shondaland, Shondaland and it's like the one that creates all the Grey's oh. Anatomy scandal, all those shows gotcha. that she was working for, which she got the job because she had cancer. She would write these articles for Elle magazine and Shonda saw them and what? hired her. Yeah. And then she was fired at one point and they brought her back because someone advocated for her because of her cancer and how like she was such a hard worker, even though she was battling this rare form of bone cancer. And it was all made up. She fucking made up all of it. And she, oh, she lied about, God, I mean, there's a lot. I won't give it all away so you guys can watch my video. But she she lied about a lot, like being involved in mass uh, shootings and just like made up a ton of shit, but got away with it. They ended the investigation because she quit and there wasn't anything else they could do. So she's just chilling now. Yeah. I guess. Yeah. Lying. Isn't People think she's going to get a book deal. <sighs> yeah. Dang. Lying is not a crime. Lying isn't a crime. She didn't do any. She didn't like uh, waste any medical resources and wow. she didn't. She didn't fundraise like this guy. We're about to talk about Rob Mercer, 37 years old from Viejo, California. He admitted to lying about having stage four terminal cancer in order to pay his way into the World Series of Poker, which was a $10,000 buy in. Uh, no limit Hold'em World Championship. <laughs> it's a very long name. <laughs> yep. So here is what we know about how all of this went down. It's a pretty wild story. So the truth about Rob's cancer diagnosis was slightly questioned by members of the poker community. Poker influencer. I didn't know there were poker influencers. Dude, that's huge. Yeah, it's Have a, you ever watched it on world. TV? No, not really. Like, like, like I know it poker, exists, like but I'm not really into gambling or like no, card games I, or anything. I, I, I don't but know. There's like a whole channel for it, I'm pretty oh, sure. Oh, yeah. No, it's a big thing. It is. It's crazy. People will bet like $500,000 on like yeah. one hand <sighs> crazy. in Vegas and stuff. I can't imagine nuts. doing that. I know. I'm scared. Dude, I would never. I get uncomfortable betting like 20 bucks. <laughs> I go to the penny machines. Yeah, I like the, the penny first slots. Time That's I, fun. Uh, when I turned 21, I went to Vegas and I was playing the penny slots. And within like the first three minutes, I won 50 bucks off a of penny oh, machine. And I was like, you were on a high. I was like, gambling is for me, baby. I <laughs> am a gambler. I was like, let's go. <laughs> I was like, a lot of people say this shit's hard. This is easy. 50 bucks on a penny slot. And then I lost it all like 15 minutes later. <laughs> I've always wanted to try the, what's the game with the red and the black? Blackjack. You- Oh, no. Oh, you've craps? Cr- roulette. I don't know. Roulette. I think it's roulette. Yeah. Oh, yeah. the spinny thing? Yeah. Oh, that's roulette. Yeah, 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 yeah. You bet on like a number and a color or whatever. Mm-hmm. And I think that would be so exciting because it's like a final thing, you know? But that's like only one try. Have you ever played blackjack? No, I haven't played shit. I've been done penny slots and that gives me anxiety. Blackjack's kind of fun because it's yeah. 
it takes a little bit longer to fully lose your your dollar. But I'm not. Is a it like a card game? It is like a card game. <laughs> Do you use cards? Sure is. <laughs> All I know how to play is Go Fish and War. So you can't gamble that. Dang. Mm. Sorry. <laughs> I do play a little, uh, sar- uh, what's it called? Solitaire? No. Um, <laughs> what's the one with the colors? Uno. I Uno. love Uno. I love some good Uno. Uno is a great mm-hmm. game. Mm-hmm. No, it's, it's very simple. Involved, yeah, really. that's <laughs> you and I. But war is even better. Remember, we used to play war all mm-hmm. the time. What's war? It's just war where you, you put down two cards and whoever has the highest like gets both the cards and whoever ends up with all the cards at the end wins. But then if you get, I forgot what it is, if you both... Um, pull out i think it's like the same number oh yeah then you go to war then you have a war and then you stack the three Mm -hmm. oh that was a fun time Mm -hmm. i remember like playing on graham and granny's bed with you Mm -hmm. i liked bs remember bs i vaguely i don't think i ever played it i remember other people oh that was my favorite game you had to lie about yeah you basically like start from the bottom you like two three four five so you'd be like two twos three fours or whatever but if you don't have the number that it's your turn then you have to lie and then someone can call BS on you. And if they're if you're proven to be a liar, then you have to take the cards. But if you didn't lie and they accused you of it, then they take them again. So it's kind mindless. of like a <laughs> mild version of poker because poker involves BSing too, correct? Like your poker face. That's I've heard about that. <laughs> Lady Gaga told me about that one. No, I don't right. think it has anything to do with poker. <laughs> poker is no, like different think, hands. But I think you lie about what you have to try to convince people you have like oh, a certain, true. Yes. you know, so yes, it's yes, yes. BSing. You can, yeah. Mm-hmm. So that's kids poker. I guess. <laughs> kids. Sure. Anyway, yes. poker influencer Doug Parscall told the Las Vegas news outlet that his first interaction with Rob was in February of this year. Doug said that Rob sent him a DM asking for help because he had cancer. Doug offered to give Rob money to play in a tournament in Lincoln, California, but Rob responded saying, I'm too sick right now, but I appreciate the offer. And then in June, Rob reached back out to Doug and asked him to spread the word about his GoFundMe to cover his buy-in for the World Series of Poker event. So he actually has his GoFundMe up here. Shall we read a little bit of this? I'm curious. It's interesting to hear the lies straight from the mouth. You True, know? it is. Hi, everyone. My name is Rob. I'm a 37-year-old semi-professional poker player with terminal cancer. I found myself going back and forth wondering if I was ever going to do this because my pride means a lot to me, and I never like asking people for help. <laughs> okay, bro. But my dream has been to play to the World Series poker main event. I've never really had sustainable bankroll to outright buy into this event, And I was conflicted on whether or not I would ever play it in my lifetime. But in August last year, I was diagnosed with terminal cancer and I was told my timetable isn't very promising. That is the most it's it's it it takes it up a fucking level when people start lying about terminal illness. Like, I'm I'm oh, my God, you are so evil. If I knock on wood had a terminal illness and read this, I would be so right? fucking so pissed. fucking mad. It's insane. Evil. Or like, or you had lost a family member yes. to cancer. It's just oh my god, zero sense of remorse at all to do something like this. I was told my timetable wasn't very promising, anywhere from six months to eighteen months, depending on how rapidly it progresses. I have been fighting hard for months now, and my body is definitely doing its best, but I can feel the sickness draining on me physically and mentally. I spend most days in bed now. I recently took a one-week trip to Vegas with my dad for the beginning of the WSOP, and I played a couple events, and I managed three caches, but nothing major. It gave me a shot of life back into me, sorry. And I felt like me again, even just for a few hours here and there. I definitely realized when I got home that if I didn't at least try to find a way to play the main once before I die, it will haunt me even more in death. God, you're fucked up. Mm. So now I'm here asking for people from the poker community as well as the general public to help me fulfill my wish. He's like a nice Make-A-Wish foundation for himself. The main starts on July 5th, I believe, and I'm hoping that we can raise money to to make this happen. And if it doesn't, well, at least I know I didn't give up my dream and I did everything I possibly could to get there. Whatever anyone donates will be a blessing and appreciated wholeheartedly. And you're really helping prolong my life by my sheer joy that poker brings me. You're helping prolong my life just by the sheer joy that poker brings me. My God, you're saving my life with your donations. Insane. Sorry, this this shit just blows me away. Um, It keeps me motivated and driven to keep living and fighting. Thank you. Oh, God bless my God. 
I forgot to add a breakdown of where the funds will go. The entry fee for the main event is $10,000. The extra $2,000 is to cover travel expenses, lodging, food, miscellaneous expenses. This is a far-fetched ask of people. I don't know, and I know I need to be realistic about expectations. And at this point, I have zero expectations of this happening. If it does, it will be a blessing. If not, I understand, and I am good with it. Thank you, everyone, for your time and being and to whatever to read my story so <sighs> doug agrees crazy. he's like okay i'll spread the word yep and use his connections to help rob raise money doug even went as far as to connect him with a famous poker player named uh nick vertucci and according to the news outlet nick offered to cover the difference in rob's gofundme um if it did not end up reaching the goal oh but it did he raised just over twelve thousand on his go fundraising page and also received private donations and was also gifted a suite at the Bellagio for several days during the mm, tournament. Very nice. Mm -hmm. At the tournament, Rob was eliminated just a few hours in, and that's when the lie started to unfold. According to Nick, the pro poker player said he saw Rob gambling in the casino after his elimination, when which made Nick and others wonder if he was spending the money from the GoFundMe. And mm. Nick said that when he confronted Rob about it, he got really defensive and decided to distance himself from Rob. Another poker player who is um, competing in the tournament, Cody Daniels, is someone who is legitimately battling a chronic illness, and he donated twenty five hundred bucks to so Rob's sad. GoFundMe. That is I know. so sad. He's actually sick. Cody pulled Rob aside at the tournament and said, after their conversation, he started to believe Rob may be lying about his health condition. He said that while he and Rob were talking, Rob gave very vague answers to questions about his health. His direct quote. He was very vague on the answers. Nobody wanted to say it. It was fishy to us. And obviously, we weren't the only ones. Doug, the poker influencer we mentioned, said he made the discovery about the lie after asking Rob for proof of his cancer. And Rob gave him a mychart.org note where it showed he had asked doctors to confirm his diagnosis, but the note did not confirm jack shit. Rob supposedly showed a similar note to the poker player community in June. And also that did not have the doctor's response on it. So I don't know why he's even yeah. attempting to give this to people. I know. Fucking whack. Doug said that he started having major doubts about Rob's story after everything that happened at the tournament. And he even said he received multiple calls from donors who shared similar concerns. Doug said he tried to confront him about it. And Rob deleted all of his social media accounts after he did. So it's not exactly clear when Rob and Doug had their last interaction, but it has come out this week that the Las Vegas Review Journal had an over the phone interview with Rob where he admitted to lying about having stage four terminal colon cancer so he could raise enough money to enter this big poker tournament. He said, and this is a direct quote, I did lie about having colon cancer. I do not have colon cancer. I use that to cover my situation. What I did was wrong. I shouldn't have told people I have colon cancer. I did that just as a spur of the moment thing when someone asked me what kind of cancer I had. He just thought up colon He's cancer. Like, mm, colon. He's like, mm, I've heard of that one. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I'm sorry for not being honest about what my situation was. If I would have done that from day one, who knows what would have happened. <laughs> Stupid. I didn't want to get exposed because it looks bad. Yeah, no shit. It looks fucking bad. He goes, it does look bad. I lied. I'm not going to deny that I lied. I should have just been transparent and comfortable about what was going on with me and tell people what was happening. <laughs> oh, this makes me so pissed. I, I know, just can't terrible. believe these fucking people. It's a, just such a massive thing to lie about. Evil. God. It's a horrible thing Even, to lie like, about. Where is your moral compass? This does not exist. This is like one of the worst things I think you can lie about. It's, Seriously. Like, I think it's bad enough to lie about having cancer, but then to lie and raise money yeah. and take money from someone yep. who actually has a terminal illness. Mm -hmm. And to take it up, say it's terminal, it's stage four. It's, the, oh, it's fucking it's unreal. Terrible. And how do you think that's what gets me is the pro, the mind hoops you must have to go through to convince no. yourself that this is going to work out. And you're not going to get fucking caught. People are going to figure out that you don't have cancer eventually. Right. Like after the tournament, I was just thinking, do what are you what are your plans? Are you just going to like dis disappear? Right. From, yeah. Like you're oh, a no, part of this community. Healed. Never mind. It was healed. Yeah. Like with that woman that I was just talking about, the writer on Grey's Anatomy, she ended up having to go to the hospital for something else. And she had her partner with her. And while they were talking to the doctors, they started she had another lie that she only had one kidney. And the doctors are talking to her and she's like, yeah, and your kidneys look good. 
And the, the woman who she's her wife is a fucking nurse. She's like, wait, kidneys. She only has kidneys. one kidney. And she starts looking at her medications and realizing that one of her medications, there's no way a doctor would prescribe it because it has an increased risk of ki kidney failure. And she only has one. And Lying about medical diagnosis is so <laughs> fucking so weird to me. insane. I can't believe she kept that. I didn't know that she kept it from her like partner or wife, too. I thought yeah. she, they both were. Oh, yep. my gosh. That's awful. And a bunch of other shit, too. You have to check out wow. my video to see the whole thing. God. It's crazy. It wow. just blew my mind. It's giving uh, Gypsy Rose. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, crazy <sighs> shit, man. So after the news from the interview came out, Rob was actually contacted by a representative from GoFundMe. His name is Jeff Platt. And he told him that his GoFundMe would not be allowed to accept additional donations as it violates terms of service. GoFundMe says, quote, GoFundMe has zero tolerance for this misuse of our platform and takes swift action against those who exploit the generosity of our community. All donors have been fully refunded and Rob has been banned from using the platform for any future fundraisers. <sighs> so when Cody heard about the news about Wait, rob just back up a little okay, bit yeah, yeah, i'm yeah. so yeah. confused about how gofundme works why because so they refunded everyone how what if he's already pulled the money out and was using it to gamble and stuff how do they do that well i think they have insurance that they i would assume like some way that they're insured so they're not getting it back from him no he literally said that he will not be paying them back right yeah he says Insane. he literally told people that he has no intentions of paying anyone back because he believes he has undiagnosed breast cancer and the do donations were made because he was sick. So he still believes he has undiagnosed cancer. There should be charges against him. Also, That's fucking insane. I also read something how he so he used calling hands because he was embarrassed about talking about the fact that he might have breast cancer because he's a man and thought that was embarrassing oh, okay bro and what's your what's your proof give us at this point he would have oh, offered totally. up some proof of no i agree i think it's all why bullshit. you think you have breast cancer i agree oh my god and the las vegas journal said he received around thirty thousand to forty thousand mm -hmm. in donations mm -hmm. uh he needs someone needs to press charges against this motherfucker how insane i know so when Cody, the one who has chronic illness, heard the news about Rob, he told CNN, when there was doubt about his illness, I didn't know who to root for, what to root for. I said, he's either lying or dying. I've spent half my life in the hospital and to do this, do what he did is insane. It's just a shame and one of the saddest things I've ever seen. It's so sad. Uh, poker influencer Doug also shares his thoughts when he found out it was all a hoax. He said that he lost his friend to colon cancer and that was why he God. was a big promoter of his fundraiser. Oh. He said, we we spent a ton of time and emotions. Many people in the poker community sent text messages and called Rob to give him support while he would cry on the phone. It was a really sick feeling in my stomach when I found out. <sighs> Man, what a big ass lie to commit to as a grown ass adult. Crazy. That is so selfish and evil. How do you go to really bed is. at night? If I did that, I would not be able to sleep no <laughs> just like clearly I said, you're not of sound one thing to do it to get sympathy a whole other thing to do it to get funds yep and then the fact that he literally mentions that he has no intent of paying people back yep he's like fuck you i have breast cancer so god which if he did if he does obviously i feel for the dude if he really has cancer i highly doubt it I mean, he hasn't shown any proof of that, of yeah. the undiagnosed breast cancer he's talking about. Maybe he does. I, I don't know. It's so sad. I'm really fucked. I feel so bad for Very bad karma to be scamming people over an illness. Just so you can go to Vegas and fuck you, dude. No, fuck seriously. You. It's terrible. His GoFundMe message is just awful to terrible. read. Terrible. Like, the like, to say, like, I can not even imagine putting in words, I have... I'm like terminally ill and yeah. I only have six to whatever, eight months to live. Mm -hmm. Like just imagine sitting down to your computer and just typing all that out, like trying to channel <sighs> that emotion. I think what pissed me off here is you guys are all by giving money to me. You are all helping me prolong my life <laughs> by sheer joy that poker brings me. And it keeps me motivated and driven to keep living and fighting. That is just fucked up. You know? Ugh, it makes me so mad. It really is. It's terrible. God, what an idiot. 
What a fucking oh, idiot. Oh god. Quick update on um on yes. Maddie Russo. Hit us. So Maddie Russo is um scheduled for a sentence hearing on October 20th. This oh. Month. oh. So we will find out Let's what happens. Keep an eye on that, you yeah. guys. Yes. I want to know what the fuck happens with her. And if you don't remember that, well, I mean, we'll link our episode yeah. on it below. But it's yeah, she thing. was scamming and on TikTok. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Literally was, was like using fake medical or I think stole medical, somehow got her hands on medical yep. supplies and was mm-hmm. like, you know, fake hooking herself up yep. to machines at her house. Dude, and that, stuff. You have to be so. Yeah. So do you want to hear what they found in her apartment? Like after they after she was arrested and everything? Yeah. They found medical equipment such as uh, IV rope, IV tubes and medical bandages, yeah. a 2023 Kia Sportage, $346 in cash, um, an iPhone, a brown wig, two different planners, four pages of emails from Coach Chella. I don't know what that is. Coachella? No, Coach. <laughs> Coach <laughs> Chella. Coach so Chella? two different words, coach and then Chella. Yeah. Uh, financial statements um, with bank information, including information about another person, two prescription bottles prescribed to another person, receipts, gift cards, Michael Kors purse. And then GoFundMe did end up returning, um, refunding the money to everyone who donated to her. Yeah, I, I'm assuming GoFundMe has some type of insurance. I would love to see the statistics on fake GoFundMes. Oh, I'm sure there's so many. How, of them. I don't how know how they actually ever... bust them, though. The ones that have been right. found out, because I'm sure there's so many right. out there that have just gotten away with it. And it's such a shame because it's a very useful platform and, you know, has helped so many people. But I get sent gun. I talked about this last time, but I get sent GoFundMes all the time and I never know if they're real. I never want to share them because, unfortunately, there are so many people that abuse the system and yeah. I wouldn't want to, like, subject my followers to something fake you know you can't it's how do you verify some of these things right everything can be faked nowadays Mm -hmm. yeah a quick google search says fewer than 0.1 percent of gofundme campaigns are scams but i don't know where they're getting that from or anything yeah Yeah. that's from the gofundme page it honestly seems a little low yeah i feel like it'd be more than that i wonder if they probably don't want to promote like put that on their page i wonder if with like gofundme i mean i've never started one or anything but i wonder how I wonder if you have to prove any of what you're saying is I don't is think you valid. do. No, I think it's super easy to just start one, to make one. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Isn't it crazy how fake everything's getting? Don't you feel like you can't trust anything online between AI and fake reviews for shit? And mm-hmm. It's like so mind blowing. Did you hear that story about um, let me let me find the details on this. This is pretty wild. OK, so I saw this on Twitter yesterday. Um, there was this video from several large accounts that have been posting this video um, of President Zelensky belly dancing. And a lot of people fell for it. They were put out all over the place, these videos of him. Um, and it's kind of a funny video. <laughs> Pull this up. So see that first one? Oh, it's- do you see this? Yeah, I saw this, but I didn't really read into it. Is it fake? Yeah. So if you scroll over to the next video, it has been modified. The original dancer um, is a man named Pablo Acosta from Argentina. I mean, they look so similar, but yeah, it was tweaked with AI to look like Zelensky. That's crazy. Well, have you, you've heard like people using AI voice generators and stuff to have like celebrities saying crazy shit. Dude, everything is fake. And you know what I've been thinking about, too? I This is kind of a sad story to end with, but um, there is this guy on TikTok. God, I forget his name. I want to look up his name and give his account a shout out because I love these guys. Um, I've been following their journey. They had two twins, these twin girls, uh, through surrogacy. So they're new parents. Um, but then he posted this video about how they were moving to, from Texas to Florida, I believe, and they used like a pet transport. They have two dogs. This is kind of sad for you, Janelle. I know it's hard to hear dog stories, but this is this is just wild. Okay, so his account is Mr. Von Trainer. He's a hairstylist. He's, look at his hair. Gorgeous. Oh, yes. I've seen this guy. I love this guy. Um, anyway, he and his partner use this service called Wagon Wheel Transport, Pet Transport, because they have obviously two twin girls and they were going to be flying with them and they felt like it'd be a lot with the dogs to to fly with them and one of them was a french bulldog one of them was a doodle of some sort 
And so they hired this service instead to drive the dogs and they had great reviews. They had thought. And in like two hours into the trip or an hour after they had left their house, this company picked up the dogs. Um, They believe the dog, one of their dogs, the um, French bulldog died within two hours of being in the car. The driver said that he got tired like an hour fucking into this drive. He hadn't even left Texas yet. And he decided to go to sleep and he put on, he said he cranked up the air conditioner and they're accusing them of having the music up so loud that they wouldn't have been able to hear the dogs barking in the back. But what the dog had, um, his vet called him and the dogs were brought into his vet. They had called them that morning and they just didn't answer the phone and they were brought directly to their vet. Who's a friend of theirs. And the vet called and said, your dog definitely died because of, yeah, had heat stroke. And in the, the other dog mm-hmm. with the people in it still. Yeah. Even though he had, I don't know if it was like in the back or what the situation what? was. That sounds so sus. Yeah. And they thought this was like a good company and everything. And apparently the vet said that the car smelled like cigarettes and that he was blaring music when he pulled up to the veterinarian office and the other dog, the doodle um, was close, <gasps> like had really bad oh uh, heat um, was overheating And so they lost their dog due to these fucking idiots. And this company, what was crazy about it is they found out that all those reviews were pretty much fake on this company, which don't go after them. It's been this big issue. Everyone's going and like harassing them on social media, but there's a bunch of wagon wheels, pet transports out there. So they're all getting bad reviews. They deserve it. Okay, I get it. They deleted theirs. So people are now finding others and and they're getting, it's been like this huge thing. Um, but they found out that the sister of the owner of the company went on social media and was paying people $20 for five-star reviews on four different platforms. How insane so it is was, that? It was real reviews, like, they as in, bots. yeah, right, they, they weren't, weren't actual <gasps> customers. What? Yeah. Was it a real company? Yeah. Wagon Wheels Pet Transport out of uh, Bradenton, oh Florida, I believe. Oh my God, I would be so fucking mad. I would do the shit out of these And fuck. then these idiots, they sent them in the mail a um, like an Amazon package and it, they open it up and they're like, we're so sorry for your loss. Not even that the loss that we caused, just we're so sorry for your loss. Hopefully you can, whatever, remember your dog with this. And they sent them a big rainbow statue with a copy of the Rainbow Bridge poem. He's like, what am I going to fucking put this in my house and remind myself of that how you, you two murdered my, my do- dogs? <gasps> That is so bad. I know. I've been Aww. like so pissed following this whole That's situation. so sad. God, those poor people and that poor dog. I know. Terrible. Terrible. They had the dog for six years. Oh, it just like broke my heart. But oh, it's cry. crazy. You can't believe fucking anything no, out there, you man. you really can't. Like, oh, it's, and it's just getting worse. I know. How do you combat it? I don't know. There's I don't think know. there's anything you can do. I don't think like, so. I think it's just the world we live in now. Yeah. Because it's internet like, kind of you can it. kind of. Well, companies try to combat bots and shit, but how do you stop someone from paying people for fake reviews? Right. Wild. Damn. Just wild. Just wanted to share that. (laughs) That's so sad. And I feel so bad for them. I'll link their account below if you want to check them out there. I just love love them. He has beautiful hair. Oh my God. Yeah, he's a a stylist. I know I'm obsessed with him. He always looks good. Dude, they have these two really cute daughters. But yeah, crazy world we live in. Can you believe we're going into 2024? Doesn't that just sound wild to you? Hear ushers doing the Super Bowl? Yep, I did hear that. Ursher, baby. What's your thoughts? Because I some people are hating hard. I'm like, really? Yeah, I'm like, I'm kind of excited for Usher. Yeah, I mean, I don't have that many thoughts on Usher. I think he's hot. I think he's hot. He has some good. He's bots. talented. He's had some weird fucking moments. Yeah, well, I still am mad at him over the T Pain thing. Right, though. right, right. That was mean. That, that was, was mean. very mean. Mm-hmm. Maybe he can apologize to T-Pain Ursh, by bringing baby. him up on the, the stage with him. I like Usher's music. I think he's got a good... I don't know. Has he released anything good lately, though? No, but his old stuff was a bop. He'll probably be pretty good. The Half Them show is always juiced up so much and is always kind of falls short, I feel like. I wonder who... Uh... Remember, we didn't really like Rihanna's last year, although people were pissed at us for that. Okay, it wasn't Rihanna's fault. I said it wasn't Rihanna's oh. fault. I think it was the production was a yeah, little lame. That's I think all. they were shitty on it. Yeah. Oh, she's a queen. Oh, there's an she just thing. had another baby. Mm-hmm. Riot Rose. Mm-hmm. Did you see People Magazine like posted an article saying, why is 
The real reason why Riot Rose is wearing pink. Oh, yeah. Like, so stupid. Gives well, don't fuck. you know that girls wear pink and boys wear blue, Kendall? <laughs> Apparently, I just thought we were past that. No. Like, that... are there really people out there that are wondering, like, yes. wait, why? Is, yes. it, is it actually a girl? Well, is it a gay? Not. Oh, no. <laughs> is it a gay baby? Oh, no. <laughs> so confusing. So fucking dumb. Yes. Colors. Colors are confusing people. That's why you got to stick. Boys wear blue, girls wear pink. Mm -hmm. That's the way of life. That's the natural way God intended. <laughs> right. What? What? <sighs> <laughs> the world is so interesting. Every day is a new day full of Every bullshit. Every day is a new day. <laughs> it's wild. It's wild. God, mm, it what's is. going on in the world now? Is there anything else going on I before we go? I just looked on trending Twitter to see if there's anything here. No, Eminem's trending. wonder why. I always get nervous when celebrities are trending. I'm like, did someone fucking die? I don't know why he's trending. Oh, he because he went out on stage with 50 Cent last night. Oh, that's cool. Maybe 50 will throw uh -oh, his mic Kanye's into this. trending. Oh, no. Dude, that fucking whole thing with Kanye and his new wife on that boat in oh, Italy. yeah, that was... Dude, I have some feelings about that. And then they that. got banned. Uh, that was fucking weird. Because she was like S in the D, right? Yeah, on the she boat. was. His ass was out. Ew. His ass was out? Mm -hmm. Yeah, she was S in the D. She was giving him yeah. waterhead, roadhead, yeah, water. boathead, boathead. Yeah, they got um, they got in trouble for that. They were mm -hmm. like banned from the yeah. taxi service, and <laughs> then they get like public indecency charges. I don't know. Yeah, that was wild. He's just <sighs> mm. fucked up. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, this is interesting. Adidas CEO. Kanye West didn't mean anti-Semitic comments. He isn't a bad person. <sighs> Fuck you. The Adidas CEO said that? Well, that's just on Twitter. Let me yes, he fucking what? meant yeah, it. Yeah, Adidas CEO said in a recent podcast interview that he doesn't think uh, rapper Ye, formerly known as Kanye, meant what he said. And that uh, He was very clear about what he said and he said it is several a, times. He doesn't think he is a bad person. It just came across that way. God, when I went to when I was in D.C., I went to the Holocaust Museum and I, Kanye kept just coming up in his in my mind throughout the whole thing. Like he should be forced to spend a few hours in there and see if he wants to still say that they weren't they weren't so bad. Let's not be so harsh on the Nazis. Hey, like, the Nazis weren't that bad. Jesus. Mm hmm. Who was? Uh, didn't he just show me the picture He's out of his mind? Yeah, there it is. Yeah, you didn't see it, Curly? No. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I scroll down. Say... You can see it, his butt. That's her butt. Well, it's somewhere. Maybe they don't have it on this article, but there's a picture of his straight ass out. Damn. I try to keep keep away from Kanye West. What's her name? Blanca Sensory or something? Bianca. Bianca Sensory. Sensory. Oh yeah, there's his. Yeah, there's his bum bum. Yeah, he's a uh, fucking idiot. I can't stand him. Oh, there it is. <gasps> Jeez, that's like so out there. Yeah. His butt's out there for the whole world to see. Look he's... how close the other boat is. <laughs> God. <laughs> nice. Very uh, nice. Oh, wow. Anyways, I think that's it for this week. Yeah, anything else you have yeah, to report for I us? I think that's it. Mm, let me see. Do I have anything to report? Nope. <sighs> anyways that's it that is it thanks for hanging out with us um oh what? we did forget to say that we will now be premiering our episodes at 3 p.m yes we're gonna try doing it a little bit later yes yeah goes. we just need a little bit more time now that we're a day to get the show out. earlier yes so you will be seeing us at 3 p.m on wednesdays mountain time yep that's 2 p.m pacific time Yep. And that's 5 p.m. Eastern time. Eastern time. And that's 4, 4. p.m. Central time. Mm -hmm. Very right. nice. We also still have some of our merch is available at milehighermerch.com. Janelle is repping one of our Flower pieces power. today. Please support the show by checking that out, you A guys. A lot of it's on sale. Yeah. Mm -hmm. so Sydney's also now. wearing some. Oh, yeah. Look at Sydney's got the Adi Ho on. Adi Ho. If you're I cold. Love that piece. It's now fall. So if you're cold, grab yourself some merch. It's got a lot of cozies on there. You heard it mm -hmm. first. That's it. We'll see you on the next session. But until then, keep, keep it fresh. It fresh. <laughs>